Welcome back to another tutorial. In this one, we are going to make a beer bottle. Um, I saw Blender Guru's older beer bottle tutorial, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to uh, try it again, but this time with a bottle. Oh, I guess he made a glass, not a bottle. I wanted to try a bottle. So uh, here we go. Uh, first thing I did was I just went out to Google, and I searched uh, beer bottle vector. And I'm just going to use this one for the outline. I just need something easy to uh, trace real quick. So let me hide that. <clears throat> and once you have that downloaded, um, come over here to um, your background images. To get this little drawer out, just hit uh, N. Select background images, add image. And I only want this in the front view. I don't want to see that in the background all the time. So open, I think I saved it in here, and I'm going to hit 5 and 1, and there it is. 5 goes into orthographic view, 1 is uh, front view. So next thing I need to do is set the scene scale. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to go to inches, and I want this bottle to be almost 7 inches. So what we can do is hit shift A, add a cube in, it looks like it's two feet. So I need seven inches. And that's how tall I want it to be. So um, it's pretty close. I'm gonna put this cube right here and I'm going to adjust the image so you could move it on the X, move it on the Y. So I want to move it on the Y uh, about there. Move it over on the X to where it's pretty much centered. Yeah, it's pretty good. That's about how tall I'll, uh, I'll want it. If you want it brighter or darker, you can mess with the opacity. I'll just leave it here where it is. Give that a shot. Okay. So let's delete this cube, because I actually don't need that. And how we're going to draw this is I'm going to drop in a plane. Uh, Z toggles in and out of a uh, wireframe view. Hit tab. Make sure your plane is selected. Hit X. And edge collapse. And that'll bring all four of the uh, vertexes down into one right here. So I'm going to go back into my front view and I'm actually going to start this up a little bit because uh, beer bottles usually cave in in the center. So I'm going to put that about right here and then I'm going to hit E and I'm pretty much just going to trace this out kind of like uh, in Photoshop using the pen tool except this doesn't have the uh, Bezier options. Let's see, E and Z. Bring that up to about there. That looks good. E. And you can take your time on this. You can go a little more uh, precise. It's a little off. You can actually uh, hold down control and the left click and that will trace it as well. Whoops. Let's see. I forgot about control and left click. I used to do it all the time and I saw someone do it the other day and I was like, oh yeah, I forgot about that. I'm just going to go all the way around here. Sorry if this is boring. I might speed it up. I don't know. We'll see. Going around here where the cap goes, and 
if you guys followed my last tutorial, you will already have a cap you can modify for this. If you don't have a cap, you can go and check out the last video that I made. And you can have your very own cap. Alright, so I'm going to take that about there. Maybe I'll delete that one. About there. And now, I'm just going to extrude this down. And the mouthpiece is usually a lot thicker. So I'm going to go about here. I don't want a crazy thick bottle, but I also don't want it too thin. So I'm just going to guesstimate here. And this is what I did for whatever the um, thumbnail photo is going to be. I try to always make the uh, the thumbnail the final result of the tutorial, hence the final result name. All right, now I can bring this guy all the way down here, and I'm just hitting E to extrude. I'm not doing anything crazy, so E and I uh, move my mouse. Except that time I accidentally double clicked because my hand spasmed and I'm tired. Let's see. I'm going to make this part kind of thick because the bottom is pretty thick. And I want this to bend up so I can select this, hold shift, select this vertice. Actually, I can just hit R and scroll up on my mouse wheel. You control R like a uh, like an edge cut. I'm going to move these up. And then I'll move that up too. I just want a nice little arc. I think that's good. All right, now we need to make sure that all these vertices, well, I guess these two, are zeroed out on the X. So you can click here, zero. Make sure that's dead zero. Right click here, that's zero. I don't care about these up here. Um, and your origin, should still be right there. Uh, hopefully you started in the uh, the center. If for some reason you're you're not centered, um, say your origin, let's see, happens to be off. Like say it's some crazy spot over here. You can go into edit mode, click right here, hit Shift S, and say cursor to selected. So now your cursor is there, but you can tab back out, hit Control Alt Shift and C, and say Origin a 3D cursor, and that'll put it where it needs to go, right back on the X. Kind of handy. And now uh, we're going to make our bottle, and we're going to use a screw modifier. Not there, this one. And that's why we want the uh, origin on the X, because it essentially spins this guy all the way around. Makes a fancy little bottle here. And I want... Eh, I think this mesh is fine. I'm going to put a few more. I'm going to hit Control R. Actually, I need to apply this. Alright, so we have our bottle. Um, don't worry about flipping anything. We can do that after. Uh, 16, yeah, this looks good. So I'm just going to apply this, tab into edit mode, go back in my front view, hit control R, and I don't want to go overboard on my edges, but I just want this kind of even throughout. And now we can select everything, hit control N, and that'll flip our normals. So now you don't have that weird gray shading. And it doesn't look that smooth. So you can come over and add a subdivision surface at about a level two. And there you go. There is a nice bottle. And I'm gonna delete this stuff here. To 
give it its material. I'm gonna drag, let's see, I'll drag this up. That's what I usually do. Go into my node editor, create a new material, click diffuse, hit P. That'll make it a principal shader. Um, I'm gonna use a HDRI for now until I set up my environment. I'm not gonna keep this in my final render, but um, I just need a quick visual of what this glass is gonna look like. So I'm gonna use my favorite one. Uh, I've linked this before in the last tutorials too. So right now, if we render, that looks awesome. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna come down here to transmission. I'm just gonna drag this up. And whenever you make glass, uh, make sure it's pure white. Um, I'm going to change this, but it's just a good habit to get into. If you're going to make clear glass, make sure that's always pure white. And I'm going to give this very little roughness, like 0 0.03. And there we go. Have a nice bottle. Looks good. So we can name this bottle. I'm typing with one hand because my microphone is in the way of my other hand. So this is going to be a fun one. To make the inside, we want to make the uh, the liquid, the beer, or pop, whatever you want. I'm going to kill this background now. We don't need it anymore. I'm just going to uncheck that. Uh, what we can do is... Let's see, tab into edit mode, hit A to deselect everything if it isn't already. Select that vertex and hit control plus. And let's go into wireframe view. And I'm, I'm just hitting control plus until it goes as high as I want it. Um, there we go. Yeah, we'll go a little more. There, why not? Nice full bottle of beer. So this is the one part that uh, I learned back in another software, and apparently it's still true in Blender as well. Um, you want your liquid to actually intersect with your glass material. So I'm going to hit Shift D, which duplicates this entire uh, inside mesh. I'm going to hit P and that separates it, and I want to separate it by my selection. So now if I go back into object mode, I have my uh, liquid, and I still have my bottle, but I want this to intersect. So I'm not in edit mode, I'm just in wireframe mode, and I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna hit S, and I'm just going to scale this in so it intersects. If it goes up here, you can hit S and Z and scale it back down a little bit. But this should work. You can see there, that's the original line. And here it is here. And you also want surface tension. So I'm going to grab this and I'm going to hit H to hide it. This is actually backwards too, so tab into edit mode, hit A, control N, and then I'm hitting control tab for my mesh select mode. I'm going to grab my edges, alt right click, and I'm going to hit E and S, and then E, S, and then hit F, control R around here, drag this back. And I'm going to grab this outside edge loop. I'm going to pull it up a little bit. And that will give us that, that little rise, that little surface tension. You can make it higher, uh, but this is going to be fine. And for the material, we're going to do just like the original tutorial. We are going to add a um, volume absorption node. So volume absorption here, and what I do is I put it in the bottle. So I unhide everything with Alt-H, 
Man, that's pretty big up there. Uh, might fix that later. I don't know. And I'm going to go into render view. And I'm going to look at my background. And I'm going to put the glass against something bright. Because glass and water work differently. If I put a light... Um, whoa. If I put a light right here on normal objects, it will give me a highlight and it'll reflect here. Well, with glass and liquid, you have refraction. So yes, I'm gonna get a highlight here, but it, the liquid's gonna be dark and it's gonna be bright over here. So essentially, if I were to have the window to my back, I could potentially actually have a much brighter material than I realize. That's the way I think of it. Um, so I'm gonna move that here. And here it is already. So let's change this. I'm gonna go with a kind of a dark brown. And I'm gonna hold shift and drag my density up. And now when I think I have um, the light transmission how I want it, I'm going to select my glass if it will let me. Oh, all right. So since we duplicated this, I'm a moron. And since we duplicated the original mesh, um, we actually have the glass and the liquid with the same material. So I'm going to go and grab my bottle, solo this, and I'm going to grab my liquid really quick and say beer. I'm going to name it so I don't get confused. Bottle. And for the bottle, I need that to be glass again which all that's fine. Let me see what it looks like now. How bad did I mess that up? Oh, it looks the same, okay. So now I'm going to select my glass and I'm gonna tint my, my glass to And this is what I did in the original as well. And you don't have to tint it. I just thought it looked cool. Okay, so I think this is what I want. Um, now, where this is going to differ from what we did in the original glass beer tutorial is I'm going to make this uh, gradient texture that has light. And you don't need anything except some nodes and a plane. So let's grab a plane, hit R. X 90. I want it rotated on the 90. I'm going to bring it, I don't know, right here. Uh, yeah, I'll keep it in the, I'll put it in the center of the bottle. We'll say there. So click new. And this is going to be in emission. So you can click diffuse and hit E. And we are going to need a couple nodes for this. So um, first thing I want is I'm going to grab my texture coordinate. Uh, that's not it. Shift A, S for search, texture coordinate. I'm going to go up to my plane, hit tab, U, and unwrap it. And that's all you have to do for that. Um, go back into edit mode. And we're going to drop in a mapping node. And then we're going to drop in a vertex math. Shift A, S, and just type in math. Or vector math, uh, vector math not vertex. I actually kept searching uh, vertex math and I couldn't find it. But it was vector. And then the type of gradient I want is I want a radial gradient. Uh, so you can get a gradient texture, changed it to 
spherical, not um, not radial. I know I just kind of contradicted what I just said, but you'll see what I'm what I'm talking about. And now I just need, we're going to use the uh, color ramp. I promise this is cool, just stick with me here. So I'm going to take the UV into the vector, and the vector into here, changes to subtract, which will essentially zero out the, uh, sphere, the spherical gradient's coordinates, so it'll be dead center. I'm going to plug this into here. I wonder if we render, if I can hit uh, control, shift, and left click. This is um, the Node Wrangler, Node Wrangler add-on. I You can't live without it. It's incredible. Um, so here, I kind of have a vignette around this plane. Well, I can change that. I can darken this guy. Bring up the luminosity here give this an emission, see what that looks like, and we're going to really crank this guy up. I'm going to hit control B, I just want a little, the, a little bit of this to be um, rendered, I don't want the whole, the whole frame to be. So yeah, that's looking kind of cool. Uh, but what I want to do is I want this to be that yellow uh, texture, or that not texture, the yellow color tint. So let's add in another plane. Move this on the Y, maybe a little more. Bring that guy in closer, not that close. There. And I don't want this, uh, all the black around it. I don't want that to show, because that's going to give me some weird looks on in my bottle too. I don't like the color of my glass. I think I need to change this guy's volume absorption to be not as dark. Maybe up to there. I color that a little bit. And now I can make my glass a little bit darker. Yeah. I'll just keep messing there until I get the transmission that I want. And if you hold shift, you can make a little incremental changes. All right, let's see. All right, so I'll worry about this a little bit later. Uh, I want to mask this out. I want that black to go away. So I'm going to search for a transparent node. This whole one hand thing, I'm not liking it. I want to invert this. So here, here, node wrangler, hold down alt, right click, and you can drag. And then I'm going to bring that color into here. Nope. Flip these. Oh, I'm dumb. Don't put that in the factor. Put it in the color. And put these back to how they were. I was right the first time. Let me see here. I'm going to turn off my sky environment. There it is. I'll bring this down. Crank this guy way up. I think mine was like 500. There we go. That's that's the transmission I wanted. Um, I think that was my original problem. 
why I wasn't getting the right color I was looking for. Let's give this a color or a material. Um, let's make it metal for now. Kind of blurry. Or no roughness, whatever you like. And I want to add in uh, two lights. So I essentially, well, let's see, what do I want to do with this? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just duplicate this. So go into top view, hit shift D, R, rotate that like that. And this time I'm going to make sure to hit that so I can change this material. I want this to be a white. That way. Yeah, there we go. It's white. Maybe I'll move that back a little. Shift D, X, and then rotate that like that. Looks good. I'm going to hide this for now. Go into front view. And now that I'm in front view, I'm going to add a camera in. I'm going to make sure your cursor is centered. Just hit Shift C. And then hit Shift A. And add a camera. And go to where you want. And hit Control Shift. And then 0 on the number pad. And that'll bring your camera to the perspective view of what you were just looking at. Um, I'm a huge fan of 85 millimeter lenses. I'm going to move this back on the Y. So I'm going to hit G and Y and just move my mouse. Yeah, my 85 millimeter lens is my, my baby. I love that lens. I want to see how uh, these two lights are shaping my bottle here. So they are too far forward. I'm going to go and grab another 3D view right here. Grab these two. Move them back. I think that looks good. Let's hit Alt-H and unhide our um, background. There we go. And at this point, you can go and mess around with your bottle. Mine's still really not looking how I want it to. Whoa, that's cool. It's kind of like a, uh, a pop bottle. Increase the density to change your type of liquid. It's kind of fun. You can mess with those for a long time. Really get some interesting colors and hues. I think I'm going to do that. And then I'll mess with this a little bit. I'm going to hit control B. And I'm watching my samples here. I think my final render was like, I don't even remember. I think I rendered it at 2,500 samples just to make sure I didn't have any fireflies or anything. And if you already have your liquid how you want, Awesome. If not, keep playing. I like to do everything in real time. That way I can solve some issues. I did pause it when I couldn't get the, uh, the gradient to go transparent. That was confusing me, but I was dumb and just plugged it into the wrong slot. And it actually is gone. If I turn up this background, whoa, a little bit. You can see I don't have that crazy black border around everything. So I'll put that back at zero. And for the droplets, um, you can do that two ways. One way is you can drop in a UV sphere. Whoa. 
smooth this guy out. Go into edit mode. Vertex select. Grab that middle one and hit O. And this is orthographic modeling. So you have a fall off distance. You can scroll your mouse in and out and change how that looks. So you can kind of give it a, a teardrop look. Move it around. Kind of push some sides in. Since this is going to be a liquid material, pushing, uh, pushing sides in and not having perfectly smooth surfaces kind of gives you some cool, some cool reflections and lighting. So I've got this one, and then I'm going to duplicate it, tab into edit mode. Oops, O, oh, and I'm going to change this one a little bit. Just so it's a bit different. And you can spend a lot of time on this. I think I googled water droplets and kind of got an idea of how they looked like on my original one uh, that I posted, I think on uh, the Facebook page. I'm Blender 3D Artist and Blender Artist. But whatever the thumbnail is, is uh, the result of this guy. So now, grab these, hit Control G, and name this Drops. If you don't see this, um, it might be hidden. So yeah, you'll have this little grayed out plus, just click it, and then that's where the group, uh, the group name goes. So now if I hit this and hit Shift G and select group, all right, Control G, there, now, now I did it, Shift G, group, oh. okay, let's give this a uh, material, just transmission, Roughness, uh, no roughness. It's water. Uh, so also with water, drag that guy all the way up. It helps. You can see it. Uh, oh, I should probably put on the layer with lights. So you can see our giant water drop here. So this one has our material. So grab these two that don't. I'm just hitting shift and right clicking, shift, right click, shift, right click, and make sure the last one you click is the one with the materials, and hit control L, and click material, and that'll make those other guys have the same material. So now we can go to our bottle, and uh, hide everything else, hit shift H, and I'm actually going to come in here, put an edge loop around here, and I'm going to grab this edge loop here. So one that's kind of past uh, there, a little kind of high on the neck, and I'm going to hit Control E, and I'm going to make a seam here. there and the reason I did that is I want to go into face select mode and hit L and make sure I'm below this seam that will select everything in there and now I'm going to uh, I'm gonna hit P separate by selection So now that is its own separate piece. So I'm going to hide my outer piece. Tab into edit mode. Control N to flip my normals. Hit Alt H to bring everything back. And once again, I'm going to select one of your bottle and hit Shift H and hide everything. And the reason I did that was I want to uh, create a particle system for this, but I 
I don't want everything to go inside too. I don't want there to be particles inside the bottle because that would just be weird. Um, so I'm going to go here. New particle system. Change emitter type to hair. I'm going to go to advanced. And I want this to be random. And for this uh, render drop down, this is essentially saying, hey, what do you want us to render? What uh, what path, what object, what group of stuff do you want it to render? Well, we made a group and we named it drops. Yours should be drops. Mine's drops of one because my computer uh, made a mistake. I'm blaming it on the computer, not me. And you see we have these lovely condensation drops that look totally photorealistic. Um, we need to change the size of this. So come down here where you selected your group right below that. Uh, I hold shift and I drag down. I change my random up. That way they don't look the same. And I don't want them rotated to the side. That's not at all how I want it. Um, and these are still kind of big. So I'm going to grab these, scale these down a little bit. There we go. I just, I put my drops on a different layer. If you want to put them in a different layer, click them, hit M, and you can move them around here. And that same uh, pop-up is right here. So if, uh, if I go down here and hit S, I can scale them. But I think that looks good. They're still to the side, which you can go in and change this to individual origin and rotate them. Um, I, th I don't, I don't think that's a, a good a good way to do it. You can just go into rotation and change this to normal, and boom. As long as we sculpt them right. Uh, then they should be in the direction that you sculpted them. And not sculpted, you guys, you know what I mean, in the direction that we made them. So let's, with these two layers selected, hit Alt-H, let's bring everything back. Make sure these guys get moved to a different layer, because we don't want these in this layer. Um, some people make stuff and they put it underneath a floor plane so it's not seen, but that's still actually calculating in our final render and we don't want that. Let's see how this looks. So I'm going to frame up my shot, come in here, hit control Z. There we go. There's some water droplets. If you want more, select your glass. Get out of here. There we go. I'm just going to get rid of this. I don't need that. I'm just going to click X. That way I don't have a uh, HDRI environment because that was throwing me off there. Yeah, those look pretty cool. So let's add some more because more is better. 5,000. Let's see what that does. Okay, more isn't always better. Uh, 3,000. 2,000. And some people cut this stuff out and write things down and have uh, their exact tutorial ready to go, which I probably should do. It'd probably go a lot smoother, but I kind of like messing up. That, guy, that way you see the full process, and if you, uh, if you do something dumb like I did, I might be able to uh, replicate it and help you. Or you can see what hasn't worked for you in the past, and maybe I can help solve that. So with this rotation, I do want to rotate these a little bit, give them a little more uh, random. Let's see. Probably be a lot easier if we turn that off. Okay, I don't want them to rotate that way. Yeah, I want them like that. So just skew them a little bit. 
and I might want a couple of these a little bit bigger. And I'm holding down shift when I'm dragging this stuff. So I make fine changes and not crazy excessive changes. There. And if you don't like how they're laid about, you can change your seed. And all right, what is that? Four? I don't mind four. I like seven more. Looks like it makes an S. That's kind of cool. There's no reason to have an S, but I think it's cool. All right. And honestly, I probably should have um, marked a seam out here. So they're not going all inside, but I can I can change that later. I'll show you how to fix that. So let's apply this. I like it, so I'm going to leave it. But first I'm gonna move this bottle to a different layer. That way it's the only thing here. Go to your modifiers and convert. And this will convert this from a particle system to actual mesh and don't click anything after you click convert if you already have control Z back to where uh, you haven't clicked convert yet and now that all of these are selected I always hit control shift alt C and put the origin to geometry it's just a habit and then I hit control J and that joins all this and makes it a mesh. And I froze. Also, something that I never do that always screws me over in the end is I don't save. Save often, especially when you're doing particle systems. Um, yeah, I'm not responding. So I'm gonna pause this Hopefully the video still works and uh, as soon as it's done, I'll come back Okay, it was like 10 more seconds and it finished um, It looks like we have a crazy amount here. That's because we have a Mesh now of all this and we still have our particle system. So let's delete the particle system You know, I still didn't save I'm going to do it as soon as this deletes. There. Okay. Uh, save. A. Save. Okay. So, uh, the reason that we hit control J is now when we select our drops, it's going to take a little bit. There's a, there's a lot of drops. And, uh, oh, I see what I did. I selected everything instead of just the drops. So if you did that too, which you probably did if you were following along with what I did, um, I'm going to go into edit mode on the bottle. And then I'm, we're going to use that uh, P selection. So on the bottle, I'm going to hit L. And wait a minute and it'll it'll grab it because this still is um, technically a separate mesh from the drops because it wasn't all created together I'm gonna press P selection which makes this uh, a different selection or a different uh, mesh now so they're not all joined I do want all the little particles joined together but I don't want it on the actual bottle. And now I'm going to go, man, this is crawling. I'm going to show you guys like a two minute way to add drops. If you have a polygon subscription, I'll go here. I'm going to grab these. Oh geez, I don't want a defined line, so I'm hitting L 
to kind of vary this and just grab a couple uh, a couple different drops and it's I'm also grabbing the ones that don't get fully selected all right that looks good and I'm just gonna hit X and delete the vertices gonna take a minute there we go. Get back out of edit mode. And I'm going to do a test render with this. And then I'm going to put all these on a different layer. That way it's not slowing everything down like it is right now. Because this is kind of ridiculous. So I'm going to hit zero. Shift and click my other layer to bring everything back. Do a test render. This may take a second too because it has to calculate all the new mesh. I just kind of changed a lot of stuff. Yep. Is not happy right now. And the other way I'm going to show you is super fast. It takes like no resources at all. Um, it's it's way easier to visualize than the way I'm doing right now but this way is free and it hopefully teaches you guys something new so after it builds the BBH it should there we go man this is so slow I promise I have an awesome computer too this is just really slowing it down. I do need a new processor. I am still rocking a slightly older i7, but it gets the job done sometimes. All right. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, even selecting something right now is taking forever. Uh, let me select one of these drops. Alright, so I was thinking. Alright, that must be one of the drops. And I did want a lot of condensation on this because I'm going to have ice all around it. I'm going to hit M and move this to a different layer. That way it gets out of my scene and I can actually move around and see what I'm doing. Um, I'm still not happy with how the light is not going through here. Um, oops, there we go. I'm gonna mess with this a little bit. Our background, I'm gonna brighten that up. That's kind of cool, making these procedural spotlights. I swear the color ramp is like my favorite tool in Blender. It's so versatile. You can use it for mass, colors, everything. It's it's awesome. Uh, yeah, so that looks good. I honestly like it without the condensation too, but whatever. What are you going to do? All right, so the easy way. Select your bottle. And... If you have a Polygon subscription, uh, Polygon, Textures, type in Water, and there's these right here. And I think I used, I think I used this one before for my test. Um, all you need is, I grabbed the 16-bit normal map, so it's not a true displacement, but check this out. You can't even tell. Hit Shift A, S, image texture, non-color data, because remember, it's not going into the color channel, it's non-color. Um, hit Control T, and again, that's 
super fast and made easy uh, due to the node wrangler. Shift A, S, normal map. And then download that texture if you can, if you have a subscription. Um, it used to be when you first signed up, you got like 10 free downloads or something. Uh, that might not be the, uh, might not be the case anymore. Uh, I'm not sure. So yeah, you can see it here. Open image. Connect this guy up. And check this out. Well, that was a letdown, huh? That's because it's set to UV coordinates and we don't have a, uh, a UV map. So let me try object. Nope, that looks awesome. Uh, box? Yeah, box will work, maybe. All right, so right now, there's a ton. You might like a ton. I don't know. I don't. So I'm going to drop this down to like 0 0.2, point, oh god, what happened? Uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, yeah, 0 0.4. Look at that, look how fast it is. All right, and also it's dumb having a uh, rectangle perspective um, on a vertical shot I just this is my default so you can set this to actually the opposite you can do like 1080 by 1920 and hit G Y oh god on your camera G Y and frame that back up G X centers it again Move this down for you. Yeah. See how fast and awesome and easy that is? And if you look right up here, uh, this is the reason why I said I should have made my seam here and separated this whole top material from the bottle because I'm getting some weird stuff inside. But that's still pretty awesome. All right, so let's look at that. I'm going to disconnect it, I'm going to save, and then I'm going to activate this layer where my particles are. I'm going to wait two and a half hours until they populate, and I'm going to get an idea of what this looks like. A little bit of an exaggeration on the two and a half hours. And also, if you guys are using uh, CPU compute, let me know how this is working out for you. I actually haven't tried it yet, just using my CPU. I know my laptop has one of the newer six cores, and it's pretty impressive. And that's what actually makes me want to switch over my desktop to something different. Holy crap, this is taking a long time. And if I pause it again, it's probably going to start as soon as I pause it. All right, I'm pausing the video. Okay, so I fully crashed. I think I know why. So this is where we last were. Um, if you guys have all your stuff showing, select the layer um, with the particle system that we converted. And we're going to... Grab these and it probably, yeah, it put a subsurf modifier on it. We don't need this. We're not going to be that close to it. Well, I'm not for the, uh, the thumbnail image. Um, and also these have way too much geometry for just being water drops. So I'm going to go in here and I want to decimate it which means um, I want to take it from 900,000 faces, like way, way down. I'm going to try like 0 0.05. I'm going to hit enter and see what that gives me. 
I'm also going to look. If these turn into like crazy sharp triangles, then I went too far. But, uh, I think it'll be okay. Yeah. 900,000 to 81,000. And honestly, that's going to look fine. Because it's going to be clear. We're not going to see all the faceted edges. I wonder if we can actually make it smooth if that does any, if that has any effect. It probably won't, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, all right. So I'm going to apply this because I'm happy with this. I'm pretty much happy with anything that is at 900,000, unless it's dollars. I will definitely take $900,000 over 81,000 if I had the choice. Honestly, either is fine with me. I'm just moving my camera to get that more centered. Now we select our layers. Oh geez, I didn't move my camera. Control Z. Uh, that's because my camera is on the other layers here. Oh no. There we go. Here's my camera. GX. I'm going to move it here. I know there's guides. Like you can go in your camera and you can turn on center or uh, grids and thirds and whatnot. Not bad for eyeballing. There we go. And you can also make sure your camera is properly set up. You don't want your rotation to be off there or be off there. You definitely want these zeroed out. Alright, so let me turn off this stuff. Control Z, and I think my water droplets are higher than my uh, my beer. So I need to change, I need to go in and delete a couple. I'm also going to take my cap from the previous tutorial and I'm going to put it on here. I'm probably going to scale this in because that's just a little too big for my liking. It juts out a little bit too far. And yeah, right here, these guys need to go. But it's looking pretty cool, I think. So I'm going to stop this. Wow, see how fast that's selected now that there's not 900,000? I'm just going to hit L. And I can do a, uh, a box selection, but I don't want that really harsh cutoff line. I like L. And I just hit period um, from that distant view. If you select an object, hit period. It'll center it up. And if you're using a different software for this, uh, I think S in Cinema 4D brings everything uh, brings everything home. I could be wrong been a while since I've used that. In 3ds Max I have no idea because 3ds Max is the reason I turned to Blender. While it was powerful, I just I didn't like it for what I had to do. There we go. That's a little better. And everything's moving so much faster now. As soon as I say that, it freezes. Cool. All right. So I think I'm happy with this. I need to look at it again. I think uh, I think I wanted to change something with my glass. Hopefully, you guys are finding some awesome settings that work for you. If you have any questions, let me know. 
I was going to use the, the normal map method, but I couldn't find a free water normal map that would work. Um, and I wanted everyone to be able to do this. I didn't want to limit it to people with just Polygon subscriptions. While I love Polygon and I use it, um, I know not everyone has it. So I want to make this available to everybody. That also bugged me when I was starting out learning. I'd be following some really cool tutorial and then like halfway through they'd bust out the whole all right let's switch over to this software now we need to uh, have this installed it was like five hundred dollars for whatever they were whatever they were wanting me to do next and no way but polygon is comes in very handy for me I'm just messing with my background here I'm trying to brighten it up brighten my liquid up Let's see if I move that in and I just kind of play see what I can come up with I kind of like that a more shallow rim light. All right, and for all the ice, after I make my bottle a little darker, there. Oh yeah, I forgot, I wanna do the cap and stuff. Um, if you don't have a cap, go to my last tutorial, make a cap, it's free and it's easy. Uh, I'm going to make sure orthographic is still selected. I think I want mm, sphere S X. Oh God. Not that much. Uh, bounding box S you go way down. Uh, it's a little better. Let me append my cap file. Let's see. Oh, I don't know where it is. Hold on. Okay, I found it. So I went to file, append, and I clicked the blend file that had my cap. I'm going to go to my object. And I know I made it out of a cylinder. I really need to start naming my stuff better. So I'm going to select cylinder, append from library. And here it is. Go to top view. Center that guy up. Actually, an easy way to center this. Click your bottle. Shift S. Uh, go to cursor to selected. Grab this guy. Shift S. Selection to cursor. And just move that up on the Z. And that, we'll put it right where it needs to go. All right, how far can I scale? So there. Need to make this a little bigger. Add a edge loop in here. Oh, turn off my orthographic uh, modeling. Just gonna bring that in. Yeah, I don't really like that. This top is so big. But it's just going to have to do for now. I don't think we're going to be able to tell that much. You can go ahead, move this guy out, move that guy out. Delete all this stuff. And I want a gold, 
gold cap. Also, when you hide everything, you don't have any lights. So control, or I'm sorry, shift Z. That's the quick way I'm getting in and out of render mode. Uh, usually you can click this and go to solid wireframe rendered. Shift Z is just faster, I think. That's the one thing I don't like in the new uh, 2.8. I get really confused and I try to use all my old commands and they don't work. But I've been trying to use it every day just to get used to it. I thought about doing this tutorial in it, but I honestly, I didn't, I didn't try it before, so I'm not just going to wing it in this. I want a, a light on the top here. Uh, I'm just going to add in a circle, move it up, not that big. Go into edit mode, hit F, give this guy an emission texture. I'm kind of watching my bottle cap. I'm watching this light here. I may actually grab one of these because I don't like that really harsh light. I hate harsh light on things. Um, yeah, I don't want this. I'm going to delete this plane. Uh, shift D, rotate this on the Y, then on the X, get that flat, get it up there. They move it in front of our bottle so it does something that would always help and now it's a little more feathered it's not uh so harsh but i just want like a little spotlight on it some people might not like that little highlight you can you can do whatever you want on this But I'm going to solo that material. I want to look at it. So there we go. My cap is kind of lit. Not cool lit. Like lighted. There we go. All right, and the last part, I'm going to grab some ice, drop in a cube. That's a good ice cube size. If I do say so myself, uh, hit control A and scale. Anytime you scale something, see how this scale right here changes. After you scale something, always make sure this is one, or else it'll meta, it'll mess up like your particle arrangement, your UV map, um, dynamics. It can mess up a lot of stuff. So to make this ice, I promise this is super simple. Just grab a principled shader. I could probably just use a glass shader for everything, but I don't. Point zero five. Sounds good. I'm going to go into edit mode and I'm going to give this a bunch of edge loops. I'm just hitting control R. Hey, there we go. I'm going to put a subdivision surface on it. I'm going to click two. Okay. Nothing exploded. Smooth. And then I want a <clears throat> displace modifier. That looks ridiculous. I want a new texture. I'm going to jump over to my textures. And I already have display selected. And I want clouds. And that actually, that's a perfect ice cube. That's how they always come to me at restaurants. No. Turn your strength way down. Point 0.1. Okay, we'll start at point 0.1. Go back to your texture. And hold shift 
and mess with the size and the depth. Um, I think my last ice cubes were pretty crazy because I wanted them to pick up a lot of light and a lot of reflection. So that looks like it might be a winner. Let's see. I'm going to go into render view. And I think it's what I'm recording. My render view is... That's what's taken so long. Because when I crashed, I hopped in and uh, hit render real quick. And it rendered right away. So I'm not too sure. I have an idea, actually. I'm going to switch my graphics cards. Yeah, I like that. Uh, now that I'm thinking of it. Where's user preferences? Let's, if I untick this and save, do you render faster? It really doesn't. I tried. Okay, so anyways, while this is thinking, uh, what we're gonna do is we are gonna make this dynamic we're going to make this glass dynamic and we're going to make the floor uh, dynamic and I always went over here to do that and for some odd reason I'm putting this back save um, this other way is so much easier so I'm going to move this out of frame and I'm gonna say, I want this as your physics tab. I'll bring this out. I want this active. So gravity is gonna affect this, it's gonna fall. I want this to be passive, which it acts like a collider body. So it doesn't move, um, but it interacts with other um, soft bodies and rigid bodies. So if I drag this up and go to timeline and hit play, this should just boing. All right, ice cube, ice cubes bounce, cool. Bounciness zero, friction, I want that up high. I want this pretty high. Let me see. Is that actually bouncing? I think it's going through the mesh. It just looks like it's bouncing. I don't think it's actually bouncing. That was pretty funny though. All right. So I'm going to hit Alt D and just get a whole bunch of these. And then when I'm done, I'm gonna make my, uh, I'm gonna make my bottle passive too. I probably shouldn't have made that many to start off with, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna make this passive. And just because I'm gonna turn off this layer and I'm gonna hit play. So it's not bad. Uh, I kinda want them to stack more. I'm gonna go five. There. Alt D Z. All right, now I might be pushing it. And what's cool about this method is, let me move all these to a different layer real quick. Uh, grab all these. I'm so unorganized tonight. I apologize. So the reason I love this shelf is say I take this guy and I want to change something over here. Like I don't want to make it have as much friction. Well, 
even though I hit Alt D, which makes an instance of this, it that didn't actually change to all the other ones. So what you can do is you can grab all these, deselect this one, select it again, and say copy from active. And now all these guys have the exact same thing as our first one. I love this. Copy from active. Boom. All right. I like it. So now let's see what this looks like. And you can cheat. You can add some passive invisible walls to hold your ice in. I usually just like, I stop it. Of course, <laughs> it blocks my beer bottle. That's, that's so cool. All right. So I kind of like this. And instead of caching all this, I'm just going to leave my, uh, not my timeline where it is. And I'm going to do a test render here. Oh, it's a lot faster without the, the particles. I like it. I might bring this plane in a little bit. I didn't mean to turn off my, uh, my render view. Yeah, I highly recommend getting a normal map. That will save you so much time in waiting around for this to render. Just give it my, I'm gonna make my beard darker. I think it looks cool. You can do whatever you want. Ooh, I like that red. Let me scale this down. I'm going to change this to ease. There. Now I get more of a, a fall off. It just doesn't go from yellow to black. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, well. I'd say there's a, the final image, and it's going to be the thumbnail. Um, I might have to do a square. That way the thumbnail looks a little better. Well, even though I said don't do 1920 by 1080, I'm going to do it. Uh, I don't like it. Just for the thumbnail. Get all that ice in there. And if I were to use the normal map method instead of actual uh, particles, I would duplicate this bottle all over. And that, that would just take so much time. Let me delete some of these ice cubes that look dumb. I kind of like them scattered about. There we go. So for my render settings, uh, I'm going to do, don't do this. Do 1080 by 1920. Don't do what I'm doing because that's dumb. 16-bit. I always leave the alpha on for whenever I want a transparent background. Um, actually, I didn't even think about the floor. I never even touched it. Should I add roughness to this or make this really dark? Meh. Nah. Let's see. Roughness. Brightens it up, but I don't like it. You might like it. Yeah, I don't like it. I'm just keeping it how we had it. So there. Um, in your sampling, I'm going to change this to... Let's see where am I at right now. I'm at 200... I'm just going to say 1500 and I like denoising, but not a lot. I don't like the blotches it makes. So I'm going to do denoising with a strength of two and all, all this stuff, make sure you can see everything. Um, 
if you can't see everything, then it'll render. You might have uh, you might have your layers not selected if you can't see like your ice chunks or something. So make sure everything is shown up here. Don't click any of this stuff. I'll get into a tutorial where we, we play with the masking layers. I actually love this feature, and I haven't I have actually I have not figured that out yet in 2.8. So I need to uh, I need to play with it a little bit more. I do finally like my glass color. Man, I cannot for the life of me select my uh, my beer. Node editor, not node editor. Properties. There, there you are, outliner. And I duplicated my glass, so I think that'd be plain 01. There it is. See, that was a lucky guess. There we go. So now I've got a little bit of bleed through. 1.5. Yeah, leave it at 2. Why not? Okay. So there we go. Denoising. Render settings. And I'm going to say render. So thanks for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Um, hopefully the next one isn't as slow and chaotic as this. But uh, yeah. Uh, this is not the big one that I had planned either. Uh, that one is still coming. I'm trying to figure out the best way to go about modeling it so it's very easy for everyone to follow like the original watch tutorial. So thanks again and I'll see you guys later.